Hey Jeep fans, it's been a pretty busy couple of weeks. Just thought I'd give you a quick update on where we're at with the Boosted Willys project. So about two weeks ago, I sat down and tore out the old L-Head um, 134 that was in my Jeep uh, for the past couple months. Um, got that torn out, was able to sell it to someone local that's going to use it in their vintage... Um, I think they're going to put it in their Willys MB, which is good because it was a 44 MB engine. Um, so also lately, it, it has kind of been looking like Christmas around here. So we're going to take a quick look at all the parts that have been coming in and uh, kind of walk through my plan of what's coming up next. Okay, so let's take a look at some of the things we've uh, I've been ordering over the past couple of weeks. They've finally been trickling in. Um, so first and foremost... I got some some plate steel. I'm going to use this to make the intake adapter to go from my throttle body to the intake manifold. As you can see, this is probably more than generous. Um, we'll have to whittle away at a bunch of this and get that going. Got a couple pieces uh, with manufacturing or machining or anything like that. You know, it's usually have good to have a couple extra pieces of stock just because you know mistakes happen. You know, you might change your design or go through a few iterations. Um, the biggest thing that came in, this is the micro squirt. So this is actually the ECU um, in all of its entirety that's going to power this fuel injection system. Um, so it came with the ECU. I did pick up an extra connector instead of if I want to make uh, a custom harness myself. Um, I also did get a, a heart. Uh, this is the eight foot version of the harness. So I had plenty of extra wire. As you can see, it's got a pretty fancy connector on the end. Um, these are all the wires. Uh, I'm not going to use necessarily all of them. Over the past few days, I have been working on my wiring diagram as well. So we'll pop that up on the screen just for a second. Um, as you can see, the kit is pretty nice. Um, a lot of the labels are wired, so you know exactly where they go. Um, and it also does come with a cable uh, that you can plug in the harness uh, right here towards the ECU. So you can hook it up to a laptop. It is a little antiquated. It does use a serial style port. So I have to pick up some type of adapter to go from serial to USB. Um, another thing I picked up, uh, so I was look, working on the wiring diagram for the ECU and the whole EFI system. It's recommended that you put some fuses and relays in there to power things like the, the system itself and the fuse, or excuse me, not the fuse box, the fuel pump relay. So I picked this guy up off of eBay. Um, it was about a hundred bucks. Comes with six fuses, two relays, so one relay for the system itself, the other relay for the fuel pump, um, and there's a number of fuse items that you should put in the system just to kind of safeguard the injectors and some of the other sensors. Um, so this I thought would be pretty good. I was uh, envisioning maybe making a panel back on the firewall, maybe where the current air cleaner is, that I could mount this, and probably the ECU itself side by side. So I got that. I also spent, I think, a good part of last Saturday out in the junkyard. I found a 1990 S10 um, with a 2.5 liter Iron Duke. Uh, which I was able to harvest some parts off of. So that's what my original Therati body came off of that I had in the last video. Um, this is just an extra I got for like 20 bucks. I figured it would be good to have an extra on hand. I also did get a the full engine harness out of the S10. You can kind of see some of the remnants of it laying over there on the floor um, as I dissected it and saved the pieces I needed. So with it, I did get a, a bunch of sensors, as you can see here. Um, so let's kind of go over those real quick. Um, on the top of the throttle body, we have the fuel injector itself. Um, and particularly, I was after this grommet right here because I looked high and low everywhere I could think of. You cannot find an aftermarket grommet like that. So I was glad I was able to get one out of the junkyard. Um, this sensor over here is the idle air control valve. Um, so that kind of uh, adjusts some, some bypass air when the engine's idling um, to allow it to idle smoother. And over on this side is the throttle position sensor. So I was able to get all the connectors, um, some wiring so I can make up some pigtails, um, some other sensors as well. We'll go over those real quick. Um, so this one is the MAP sensor or manifold absolute pressure. So I'm not sure which style this is, 
Um, so GM has a couple different styles. There's a one, two, and three bar. Um, so bar is a measurement of PSI. So one bar would probably be good for a naturally aspirated engine. But once you get into forced induction, like I'm gonna have, I may need to switch to a two bar or three bar sensor. Um, we got some other things here too. This should look pretty familiar. It's just a, a narrow band O2 sensor that uh, just a single wire version, so it's non-heated. That just came out of the exhaust. That's why it's kind of sooty looking. Um, this little guy is the intake air temperature sensor. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. And this is the coolant sensor. Um, so with this setup, I'm thinking about running a Ford six wire mass airflow sensor as well. And the reason I wanna do the six wire over the four wire is because the six wire also has an integral intake air temperature sensor. So I'll be able to do away with this. And I think with that said, I will be able to use a pretty much unmodified cylinder head uh, because my coolant sensor that I talked about earlier, I'll pop this off real quick. Um, I'll show you on this head over here. So there's my coolant sensor. It can go with the normal coolant sensor port in the block. Um, my throttle potty will bolt on and my mass airflow sensor will float out somewhere in space and be in part of the intake duct. So I won't need to modify the intake at all to fit that intake air sensor. I thought at one point I was gonna have to maybe drill out this hole or get creative and drill out one of these bosses to be able to tap that in there. But I think with the Ford six wire mass airflow sensor, I'll be able to get away with not doing that. Um, so I got some cylinder heads. This is for another project I'm working on. Um, but this is a head that a good friend of mine lent me for a while. Um, and as I got to looking at this other head that I'm using for uh, another F head I'm building up for a friend of mine, got to looking at it and I have the, the stock valve train um, elsewhere in my shop, but I got to looking at it. I was like, man, there has to be a better way to incorporate um, rocker arms into this thing. So if you've ever seen the rocker arms for a stock F head before, kind of these chintzy stamp metal things. So I got to thinking, got to talking to people, um, and someone mentioned that a rocker arm off a big block Chevy would work. So I ordered one, I think I got this on eBay for like 20 bucks uh, new. So then I got to looking at this, and I was like, well, I'll be damned. I think if I made some sort of pedestal um, that would span, you know, obviously you gotta take into account where the head bolts are. Um, and where the push rod is, I think I could probably get that to work. But the other thing I would have to do, um, so this port over here um, squirts out oil and flows through the stock valve train system to keep the whole lifter assembly, or excuse me, the valve train assembly lubricated. So I'd have to figure out some sort of spray bar uh, to keep everything well oiled. So in a nutshell, that's kind of what I've been working on. I still have to figure out a few more things. I do need to figure out a six wire mass airflow sensor from probably a Ford unit, um, just because I think they're the only ones that use an integral intake air temperature sensor. So working on some cool stuff. Thought I'd give you a quick update of what's going on. And now we'll talk about what's next. So one thing I mentioned was I need to find a Ford six wire mass airflow sensor. Uh, I need to work on finishing out my wiring diagram a little bit because for this application, it's obviously a little bit custom. Um, another thing I need to do is iron out what exactly I'm doing with the engine. So I've been talking to a, a handful of people that I, I found through Facebook or the internet or forums or things like that. Uh, apparently there is a thing called swamp buggy racing. Uh, it's pretty predominant down in the Florida area, particularly Naples. Um, and there's one class where you have to run a Jeep engine so a lot of people, surprisingly, are running these F-heads. So I've been talking to a few few folks. Um, I know one guy I was talking to said he runs his F-head up to 8,000 RPM, which is about twice the normal red line. So I'm reaching out to these people, having some conversations, um, talking to them about the things that they're doing to their F-heads to make it a little more, um, give it a little bit of longevity and how they're getting power out of it. I think one guy said he was running about 150 horsepower out of his F-head and it's, it's pretty heavily modified. He made his own custom aluminum cylinder head. Um, so it's a pretty interesting things going on. Um, then beyond that, I do need to pull uh, one of my donor engines into the shop, get it torn down, 
um, and sent off to the machine shop to get freshened up. Uh, so stay tuned. Uh, hopefully you subscribe and see what's next.